forward. Okay, so um, huh, tell Bri I said good morning to you. Um, so um, your essays are looking really, really good. I'm not grading them yet because here's what I want you to do. Here's what I want you to do with your essays because I just, I looked at them. I have looked at them, but here's what I want you to do before I officially grade them, okay? I'm giving you a second chance, okay? One last chance. I want you to go back. I want you to double check. I want you to double check your grammar. I want you to double check your punctuation. I want you to make sure that you have the, if you're talking about the book, The Outsiders, if, you have, if you're talking about the actual title of The Outsiders, I want you to make sure that you have the book in quotations and italicized. I want you to have it capitalized. Um, I want you to make sure that you have paragraphs indented. Okay. Um, I hope that you all are writing this down because these are things that I've noticed on most papers that are happening. Okay. So um, you need to have, some of you have one big long paragraph. Okay. That's not how we write, okay? So make sure that you have paragraphs, all right? Um, make sure that you have your stuff double spaced. Uh, again, there goes my camera. Um, make sure you have things double spaced. And uh, that doesn't mean double spaced between paragraphs. That means every line is double spaced, okay? Um, let's see, what else did I see? Um, Contraction. No contractions. No contractions. Does everyone know what a contraction is? My seniors like to say things that are not appropriate, but. <laughs> that means it's cannot, not can't. Yes. Did not, that not didn't. None of those words using an apostrophe. Okay, so it's did not, should not, could not, not shouldn't, wouldn't, couldn't, can't, didn't. It's did not, would not. Don't use I, okay? We don't write in first person, okay? I know that's hard sometimes, but I want you to get used to not writing in first person, okay? You can use the word one. One might say, or one might notice, or one could notice. Or you could even say the reader, like the, the reader. reader may see. Yep, okay, so you could use that. Okay, so I want you to take some time, take some time and go back and look at that again today, okay, after we're done today, and um, review before I officially grade everything, um, because it is a test grade, okay, it's an assessment grade, and I want you all to get the very best chance that you get on it, okay, um, and go back and just review those, those things that we talked about, um, because I do want you to have a chance to, um, to have the very best option on there, okay? Any questions on that for your essay? Any questions? Okay, but your content was really good. When I skimmed through what I saw, your content was good. You guys are pretty much on point. Oh, one other thing. Check your citations, guys. You must have citations. Make sure that you're putting in where you got your information, where your evidence is coming from. That is those documents that we looked for, we didn't look at those just to look at them for you to have extra work to do, okay? Those documents you were supposed to pull from and put the information into your essay, okay? You have to cite those sources and say where you got the information, okay? It's important that you do that because if you don't, then technically you're plagiarizing and that's not good, okay? Plagiarizing is a bad thing. Okay? You don't wanna do that. It can get you in trouble later on. And as you get older into other, as you move upwards in high school, you'll get into more details as to what that can do to affect your education and your career and things like that. So get used to citing your sources now so that you don't get into trouble with it later, okay? And that involves, even if you're just kind of paraphrasing, you're not specifically quoting like word for word, if you're just paraphrasing, you still have to put that citation in there because it's still not your information. And if you need help with that, please ask either me or Miss uh, Miss Pierce. Either one of us will be happy to help you. Okay, um, we're, we promise we'll 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 help you any way we possibly can. Okay, so 
Um, I know that we haven't dove deep into citations. So any anything that you do to cite your sources at this point is fine. Um, I just want you to cite your sources, okay? So show me that you can at least give credit where credit is due, okay? So, all right, any questions? Any questions? Everybody's shaking their head. All right, we good. All right. I do have to shout out the freshmen are really good about turning their cameras on. Y'all are like numero uno I class. I know, like they're not afraid to show their faces and like have it all out there. I love it, love it. So huge. They're like, they're like the best at turning in their work too. I mean, I know that we don't have the whole class that's turning in their work, but the, like we have like over half the class that's turning in their work. So like they're what? just like, I know. I don't believe it. I love so. it. So they're doing, I mean, you guys are showing up like all the upperclassmen. So, I mean. Yeah. You're acting like upperclassmen with your responsibility level you're all taking for this. I'm very impressed, guys. So keep it up, keep it up. And, you know, maybe, you know, if you got upperclassmen that live at home, tell them, say, hey, we're showing you up. You know, Kara, Maria, you know, I know you people got like upperclassmen living at home. Bryston, I know you got upperclassmen living at home. So, yeah. You tell them, say, hey, this cock said we're turning stuff in. Yeah. So, anywho. <laughs> Maria. <laughs> What'd she say? She said cough, cough, and then her brother's name, cough, cough, in, in the comments. <laughs> so. Oh, yeah. way to nonchalantly throw your brother under the bus. Yes. So, anyway. But. So just uh, just know that I'm proud of you all and you all are doing really great and just keep it, keep up the good work. And I'm seeing it and I am seeing it in your work. Um, just keep it up. And uh, I'm, I'm really proud of what you all are doing. Okay. So just, like I said, you guys are improving as we go. And I just want to keep seeing that improvement, keep moving forward. So, um, so in the sense of moving forward, we are going to move forward into our next unit. And so, but we're still kind of talking about insiders and outsiders as we go forward. So um, let's take a look at, if you guys will, we are moving to, um, and let me pull up my, oh, we have, I keep letting people in. So sorry guys, I keep pausing because I have my doorbell that rings. My little doorbell goes ding dong every time someone comes into my waiting room. And by the way, I need to take a picture so I know who's here. I'm not taking a picture of like, you know, all of us. I'm just taking pictures so I can take, you know, attendance. There we go. Take a picture. My phone is acting all kinds of weird today. I had to like restart it like four times this morning. I just blame it on the weather. Okay. All right. So let's see. Let me screen, uh, share my screen here. All right. All right, so if you go to your classroom page and go on your classwork tab. You can see that I've already posted our vocabulary for today. So we have our vocabulary and um, we have our um, uh, insider outsider slides. Okay, so this is day one for our in, uh, day one for this. Um, so if you want, you can click on this. We're gonna, I'm just gonna talk about it with you right now, um, or you can follow along. So I want you to think, and let's have a discussion. Let's talk, which means you guys can unmute or you guys can chat, but I prefer you guys unmute because it's fun when we chat and talk. How do you think fiction and history portray insiders and outsiders based on what you've read before class, before you came to my class and what you have read since you've entered my class? How do you think fiction and history portray insiders and outsiders? Like between reading, movies, anything. How do you think? How do you think history portrays insiders and outsiders? Yeah. Say that again. They're, they're always mortal enemies. They're always mortal enemies, okay. So um, anyone want to build on that? Why would they always be mortal enemies?
Okay, and then I have someone that's posted and says, in the movies, the mean popular girls were like the socias. Okay, so they're well respected. Are they well respected or are they feared? What do you think? Feared, okay. What's the difference? They're scary. They're scary. <laughs> okay, so, but what's the difference between being a, someone who's an insider or an outsider who's well-respected versus feared? Fear is something forced while respect is something earned. Okay, all right, very good, very good. All right, so what, who usually tells the stories of what happens to the insiders or the outsiders? Okay, I have one person that says an outsider. I have another person that says the people in the middle. Okay. Anyone else have something? Who do you think told the story of the outsiders that um, Essie Hinton wrote? What, did, what side do you think she was on? You think she was an insider or an outsider? You think she was a social? She, she was on the writer's side. She was on what side? She was on the writer's side? The outsider. So I have a lot of people saying that she's an outsider. So she, you think that she was, okay. So she, but was she a greaser? Was she a soch? Which one was she, or was she, you think she was a greaser? Okay, I have someone that says she was like the people who were in the middle. She was neither. Okay, so I'm kind of getting like all different ideas here. Okay, which is good. Okay, she's telling the story from the greaser's point of view. So we think that she's a greaser. Okay. All right. All right. Anyone else have any ideas? What are some other ideas of where the story, where this usually, who usually tells the stories of what happened? When you hear these stories of outsiders and insiders or the good versus evil and things like that. Right, the author did tell the story, but I'm saying like who, who, um, what side do you think the author was on? Was she a greaser? Was she a soch? Was she someone like, like that's what I'm saying. Okay, so she, people in between so that they have an opinion on both sides. Okay, all right. All right, so that, those are all good ideas. So there's really, it can really vary depending on the story, right? Right, it depends on the story itself. It can depend on who, like where the story is coming from and things like that. So, um, so again, as we're talking about who are, who's in the story? Like what's going on in the story? Where do the stories take place, okay? This is how all of these things get answered, all right? Um, why do the stories exist? Why do you think it's important for us to tell stories about insiders and outsiders? Why is it important for us to tell these stories? Why do you think it's, why do you think we like having stories about insiders and outsiders? Why do you think we like to read them? Okay, so later generations will eventually learn about them. Okay. Why do we think that's important?
legacies, okay, to see their perspective of both sides, all right. Many of the things that happen in our movies are also happening in schools and homes, okay? So it gives people something to relate to, right? It gives people a connection. So people can feel like they're not the only ones maybe going through something, okay, All right? So a lot of times maybe these stories exist so that if like, let's say, if you feel like you're going through something all by yourself, maybe you're really not. And these stories exist so that you know that you're not out there feeling something all by yourself, right? So you're not the only one in this world that's actually going through this one thing that you think that you're the only one going through, okay? So everyone has probably been through something at some point. The same thing that you've dealt with, someone else has probably dealt with somewhere out there, okay? More than likely. So... That's what these insider outsider stories are really about is to bring you in and to have somebody there that can relate to you and to have and so that you can build a relationship with somebody, even though they may be fictional. You can still build a relationship with that character. Right. So most of you have read the outsiders, even in middle school, like read the full story, not just the excerpts that we read here, but the full story and can anyone relate to either side, the greasers or the socials? Anyone relate to anything that they've been through? I mean, I can. No one can relate to anything that they've been through? Either side? No one's ever been picked on before? Even by your brother or your sister? I know that you have. If you got a sibling, you've been picked on by your brother or your sister. I know that. Okay. So. Right. It doesn't have to be on the same level as the greaser. It doesn't have to be on that same level. Okay. Okay. But it's the idea that you can relate to that, okay? And like, I mean, there are certain things that you can you can find that you can relate to, okay? Like, even if you haven't lost a parent, maybe you've lost a pet or something like that, where you still can feel that loss of something, where you've lost something that they've lost, okay? So those kind of things, okay? You can kind of find those relationships that you can with each of those characters, okay? So that's where those relationships and contacts come into play. All right, so do you think that these stories have to be true when you read them? Do they have to have, do they have to be true? Okay, no, they don't really have to be true. They can have some fiction. They, I mean, they can be based on fact, but they can, they can be fictional. They can definitely be fictional. So, but they can have factual elements tied to them for sure. Okay. So we're going to move along um, and we are going to um, work on, I want you all after, um, after we are done with our class today, you guys are going to watch a TED talk. It's about 20 minutes long, so we're not going to have time to watch it together in class. Um, but uh, I do want to go over um, how to take these notes and everything. The link for the TED talk is here. Okay, this is the text version. This is the actual TED talk. You can cut. Uh, have the text version so you can follow along with the t uh, with the TED Talk. Um, and here are the TED Talk notes. I do want us to kind of go over the notes a little bit together and do some of the stuff beforehand so that you guys can see how to fill some of this out. So if you will, you can open this up and open it with Doc Hub. It should be working today. I know that I think the last couple of times we tried to do this, it wasn't working. And it looks like it's loading. Yay.
And in order to type on DocHub, you're going to click on this A right here. And then when you click on an area, you're gonna, it's gonna put a little text box there for you. And you can type. All right, how are we doing? We here? We good? Me? No. Kind of, sort of. Oh, my chat, my chat's turning orange. Let's see what yes. Yeah, no, yes. Real bad internet, okay. Thumbs up if you got it. So got thumbs down, thumbs up, thumbs up. I still got a few people, I think their internet is a little bit slow. Okay, how are we doing? Uh, so Riley, Jessica, and Kara, how are we doing? Okay, Riley's got it. Kara, Jessica? I don't know if they can hear me or not. Okay, there you go, yeah. There you go. Okay. Good deal. Okay. So we, uh, where'd I go? Where'd my, where'd my slides go? Ah, I lost my slides. All right. So uh, we are going to do the before part together. We're going to try to do as much of this as we can before we're, we run out of time. Okay. Um, this before the talk. Okay. And during the talk is what you guys are going to fill out while you guys are watching it. Does that make sense? And then you guys are gonna fill out after the talk as well, okay? All right, um, so um, if we don't get done with before the talk, then you guys will have to finish this on your own, of course, um, but we'll do the best we can, okay? So um, let's, so what's the title of our story? What's the title of our talk? You should know this pretty quick. It's right there pretty much. So I can get back to where I was. What's the title? The yep, there you go. A danger, the danger of a single story. You guys can unmute yourselves and talk. Although I know Maria's worried about sounding like an alien again when she speaks because her internet's weird. Okay. So do we have a date and location for the talk? So if we click on the TED Talk, This would be our date and location right here. 
because it tells us that it was at the TED Global 2009 in July. And you can find that by clicking here on that link and this pops up. Everyone good so far? Okay, got one thumbs up. Everyone good so far? Okay. All right. So who's our speaker? Because I know her name is very hard to pronounce, but who's our speaker? Yes. Adichie. So this is her name. This is her entire name. And yes, I'm a big fan of copy and paste. I don't make things harder than I have to. Okay. Right, Miss Pierce? Don't you agree? Don't make things harder than you have to. Yeah, we're not here to reinvent the wheel. Yeah. Okay. All right, so what, when I say vocation, what does that mean? What does that mean when I say vocation? Let's reinvent the wheel, <laughs> Maria. <laughs> you see what I have to deal with, Ms. Pierce? You see what I have to deal with? <laughs> What does it mean by vocation? No, not, no, not what's her message. Vocation. Anyone have an idea? Anyone want to take another guess? I'm so quiet this morning. No, not what she wants to talk about. You want to go for a third one? Come on, go for a third one and then I'll tell you if you're wrong. Her job. Yes. Her job, what she does. I was about to tell you my vocation is a teacher. So what is what is I what do I do? So her job, yes, very good. Her job. So we need to go and look at um, her. We need to look at about her again. And what is her job? What does she do? She's a novelist. She's a novelist. So there it is right there. So I'm just gonna put that over here. And there we go. Okay. So now we're gonna try to figure out why we should listen to her. Why do we need to listen to people? Because when we are doing research, when we are trying to figure out whether someone has credibility, whether someone, um, whether we need to listen to what people say, or whether we need to not listen to what people say, it's important that we take into consideration their background, where they come from and um, what, where they're actually, where they speak from and what their, what their background is, what their history is. So um, what makes them a credible source? So why are we gonna listen to her? Okay, so we're gonna list three facts from the speaker's biography page, all right? So like where they went to school um, and things like that. So let's go back to her biography page. Here's her biography page. 
So what do you, why do you think that we should listen to her? Okay, why don't you take a look at that really quick and I want you guys to tell me why we should listen to her. Because she's smart is not an answer. <laughs> yes, she's smart, but that is not an answer. There's a lot of smart people who say a lot of dumb things. I'm just going to say that. about your brother, Maria. <laughs> okay, so um, I have someone that says her stories are relatable because some are inspired by true events. Okay, so that's something that we can put on there. So, um, so her stories Okay, because she's been in other TED Talks. Um, what do you guys think? Is that a valid reason to listen to her? Is that a valid reason to have credibility? I mean, people can be in TED Talks and still maybe not have credibility. What kind of information? Okay, because TED Talks are a reliable source. All right, well. We're asking specifically about this presenter though. How is she credible? Not TED Talks in the broad sense, but specifically her. Can we go back to look at that um, Why Listen page? Yes. We we'll have a couple of minutes, guys. Okay, I have someone who quoted this one right here. That's exactly what I saw too. Good eye. Yeah. I'll say, guys, if you have struggled with moving around your text boxes, if you notice Miss Cox is clicking on the waffle type look with the six dots, that's how you can move it around easier. Okay, so we need one more. What's one more?
Okay, that's a good one. One of her novels helps spread cross communication during a war. Okay. Um, so I think that's a good one too. Okay. All right. So then we would have our citation, our MLA citation. So we would have our author, which would be uh, Adichie, and then oops. Okay, and then we would have that's the period, and then the title of our TED talk. Because it tells us it's giving us our code right here, our format right here. So this is the information that we have about the TED Talk itself, like where, um, so the, uh, I keep pointing to the screen like you guys can see it. Uh, the citation of the actual TED Talk itself, okay? Make sure you watch your punctuation when it comes to putting that citation in or it'll get it'll be wrong guys it even has it on there it even tells you where to put the periods where to put the commas and things like that okay i say mrs cox don't we have to put a period after july 2009 and still put lecture at the end because that's the uh, mode of which we got it i don't know the the uh, i think i don't know if we have to put lecture at the end or not i think that's a lecture i don't know Are you looking that up? Yep. Okay. All right. So while Ms. Pierce is looking that up, guys, and we are actually officially out of time, but you guys need to fill this out before you watch the video. And then you guys can take the time to watch the video um, after, well, after we're done here, okay? And like I said, it's about a 20 minute video. Um, and then what you'll do is I'm going to, whoops, wrong class. Um, Okay. Um, I will um, create an assignment here. Actually, I'll do it right now for you to uh, uh, complete it. Let's see. And you can attach your TED Talk notes here. Okay. Does that make sense? You know how to attach them to the Google Classroom? You know how to attach your notes here? Yeah? Okay, so you will attach them here. All right? Um, and those will be due by next class period. 
All right, everybody got that? Everybody cool? All right. So um, any questions about anything before I let y'all go? Yes, Ms. Pierce, did you find the answer to that? Okay. No. All right, we'll just I did not. Okay. So we have completed the first couple, the first part of it here together. So you should have that done. You should have that done. Okay. The rest of this you'll do on your own. All right. Uh, if you are struggling with this part here, please let me know. And then we can try to work on some of this next class period. If everybody, if we have more than a few people that have more than like two or three people that have problems with this, then we'll work on it next class period. Okay. But you need to let me know before it's too late. Okay. You don't have to say that it was a lecture. Okay. I didn't think so. Okay. All right. Any questions, guys? Girls? Any questions? All right. I've held you over five minutes, so I will try to give you five minutes back next time. All right. You guys have a great day, and I will see you all on Thursday. Bye, y'all. Bye, Maria. Have a good day. Uh, I was just going to tell you.